So if you didn't ask the question and you're told that the only dumb question is the question that you don't ask, then are you by default admitting that you might be dumb to the fact as to why Farad arranged these in this way? So in the problem book, you are introduced to questions and you're given right a prize, a reward for answering the mathematical question. So this is not outside of the realm of the way you are already being engineered to approach this supreme wisdom, right? So since I have a reward for you, right, which is a $100 value, right, my book, right, if you can answer the questions, right, why 10, 1 to 10, why 1 to 14, why 1 to 36, and why 1 to 40, and what does it have to do with the above nine words that are attached to the nine numbers, right, 10 plus 14 plus 36 plus 40 equals 100, your reward is a $100 value a book, now I know Right there are some people that are going to listen to this video. And right at the moment, you broke as fuck. Could a hundred dollars video could a hundred dollars really, really, really do you some good right now? Right? So I'm gonna give you, right, a book that's valued at a hundred dollars, right? I think the book is worth a thousand dollars. Matter of fact, I'm not thinking I know that this book is worth a thousand dollars. And once you get this book, right, by answering this question, I guarantee you that you'll come back and give me a tip. Because I just tipped you off to something about Farad's thinking. And if $100 couldn't benefit somebody right now, and if the person that answers it is in such a pitiful condition, right, that's described in the problem book, and if you look at those problems in the problem book, and if math is a problem solver, and the so-called American Negro is in the American educational system, and if we look at the statistics, America is behind in mathematics. So if the so-called Negro is in the American public educational school system, then they too would ultimately have a problem with mathematics. Now, what I'm finding out is most Negroes don't have a problem with religion. They have a problem with mathematics. If you look around the globe, sir, Mr. Shabazz, the greater taker. If you look around the world in the poorest neighborhoods, they have an abundance of religious buildings, churches on all corners, but yet they're in poverty and they're full of problems. But math is a problem solver. So are you the devil today that's trying to keep your people illiterate? And the foundation of all sciences is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. The computer to which I'm communicating to you through was built based on those nine numbers. The mothership that you guys are talking about, if it is true, was built based upon those nine numbers. Without those nine numbers, no computer, no airplanes, no house. I think math has been very, very beneficial to those who have availed themselves of it. If you look around the world at the groups and nations of people that had affixed themselves to master these nine numbers, 
you will find a nation of people that are more successful than the so-called American Negro, even the FOI in the MGT. So I'm saying, again, let's get back to my question. Let's get back to understanding what is Farad talking about? And if you can answer that question, whether it's the secretary, whether it's the minister, the lieutenant, the captain, and it's going to be pretty, pretty messed up if the children answer the question before you. See, because based on what I'm talking about, when you strip away the religious jargon and the mythologies that are attached to the mathematics, someone can answer this question that is not even a member of the Nation of Islam. Because the blues clues are already here. You have 1 to 10, 1 to 14, 1 to 36, 1 to 40. And I said, what does that have to do with the above said nine words that are attached to the nine numbers? We're talking about the teachings of W.D. Farrar. 